So what clues can we glean from yesterday's address as to how President Obama will conduct foreign policy in his second term? For an answer, we go to Palo Alto, California, and Janine Zakaria. Janine is a visiting lecturer at Stanford University and former Jerusalem bureau chief for The Washington Post. And we welcome you back inside the war room, Janine. Thanks, Michael. Uh, is it fair to say, Janine, that the era, the Bush era of foreign policy, one where the United States went into war without provocation, is over? Well, it's certainly clear from President Obama's address that the U.S. won't be searching for new conflicts to take the lead in. He repeatedly said that the era of, of war, is, a decade of war, is coming to an end. Um, and he stressed the need for these alliances and also to resolve differences peacefully. I think that was a key line that may not be getting as much attention domestically, but certainly in places like Israel and elsewhere, where the issue of, say, Iran's nuclear program or say the Syria uh, quagmire uh, is, is supreme. So I think he's definitely looking to take a step back and more of an auxiliary role uh, on the world stage and world conflict. You, you know, it's interesting to hear you say that. Bush's foreign policy was, was kind of doctrinal, and, and it seems that, that Obama's is very different. It's sort of hard to define. And, and you know, in saying that, I want to know what you think the difference is going to be with, with Hillary Clinton gone and John Kerry stepping in. I, I know we can't really say. We don't know how Kerry is as a diplomat. But what, what sort of changes would you predict will happen to our foreign policy? I don't know if I can predict it. I mean, Hillary Clinton was a, a you know, she's a, she's a rock star abroad. I've traveled with her in the past. Um, she's very well known. And I don't know if President Obama used her, uh, her celebrity to the fullest extent. She traveled more than any Secretary of State, I believe, logged more miles, went to more countries, I think over 100. Um, and what we may see from John Kerry, perhaps, is a little bit more focused diplomacy. Um, certainly, he has a lot of experience on the Syria front. Um, in the past, he's worked as, and I've written about this, as, a, as an informal envoy for the United States um, in Afghanistan and elsewhere. So I think that perhaps and he will be hankering for that kind of role where he can actually make a difference in some of these, in some of these conflicts. I think that there's a sense, um, my sense at least from talking to people in Washington, is that President Obama would like to pivot to Asia. But there's no doubt that he's going to remain um, bogged down in one way or another in the Middle East, North Africa, as we've seen in the, in the past few days, has become a major problem. Um, and I think that's where you'll see Senator Kerry headed pretty soon. You know, I, let, let's talk about North Africa then. You know, Algeria, part of North Africa, it's been getting a lot of attention. Uh, at least 35 people were killed when the Islamists took hostages at the BP gas facility. Is this yet another area where we have to worry about Al Qaeda? And, and, you know, we talk about it with Mali, we talk about it with Somalia as well. Is this, is this a big concern right now? Well, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, as the Al Qaeda affiliate in North Africa is known, is well known to Mid East watchers and terrorism analysts. It hasn't gotten the attention of the American public because we, the American public doesn't pay a lot of attention to North Africa. But obviously, it's a threat that needs to be paid attention to, given yeah. what's happened in Benghazi, Libya, um, given what happened in Algeria, and now the war in Mali that the French are leading. But if you take note, the United States is today beginning to airlift some of those French troops in. So they are playing, like I mentioned, an auxiliary role. But yeah. I think certainly the Algeria thing needs to get more U.S. focus, especially since we had at least three Americans killed there. Uh, and, you know, skipping around the region, what do you make of the kind of poor, poor showing that Benjamin Netanyahu got at the polls in Israel? I, you know, he's going to be in his job still, but far weaker, they say. Well, he certainly got, you know, a few less seats than he did. He has a little bit of a coalition support. He and the party he joined with, they got about 31 seats. Um, you need a majority of, of 61 to really govern. There's one or two other uh, parties that he can join with. I think the big picture here is, as in his first term now, I mean his first term most recently, he served in the 90s as well as prime minister, there's going to be little movement on the peace process. And that's obviously the issue that the United States and other allies want to see movement on. Uh, there's going to be, depending on the parties that he joined with, there's this new party called Yesha Tid in Hebrew. There is a future. They campaign not on the Palestinian issue, but rather on domestic issues uh, like but things that have to do with the split between secular and ultra-Orthodox Jews. So there's going to be an internal focus, and there's going mm -hmm. to certainly be, he's going to have a tough time forming a coalition. But in terms of foreign policy, Prime Minister Netanyahu is all about Iran. No matter who his coalition partners are, that's going to be the main issue on the U.S.-Israel agenda.
Yeah, it doesn't seem like he's someone to weaken, and it's always nice to have someone who used to be the Jerusalem bureau chief uh, answer a question like that. A lot of great information. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't seem like he's going to change just because he lost a few seats. Uh, before we uh, before we say goodbye, Janine, uh, the, uh, we are on the eve of Hillary Clinton testifying on Benghazi tomorrow. What what do we expect from that? And you know, do we expect any kind of tarnish to the image that Hillary Clinton has, especially going forward? Because we all quietly know what the next step is probably will be for her. Well, given that Democrats, I think, are already starting to raise money for her for, for 2016, I, I can't, I, it's hard for me to imagine a scenario where she'll really fumble that badly tomorrow. I think that um, she's going to be grilled about what she knew when in the unfolding of the attacks on the, on the U.S. mission in Libya uh, on September 11th, um, about, of course, the, the remarks by um, our U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Susan Rice, in the aftermath about whether it was a terrorist attack or not a terrorist attack. But I expect the tone to be a little bit different than we could have imagined it being had she testified a month ago before she was took ill, given the fact that the election is now over and that this is kind of her swan song. She's only got a few more days as Secretary of State before uh, Senator Kerry is expected to be confirmed and to take over. So I can see Republicans going a little bit easier on her, albeit, you know, still having some tough questioning about the whole episode. And hopefully we'll have some sense of the key question answered. How are we going to better protect our diplomats in these dangerous areas abroad? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm a little less optimistic. I actually think that uh, 2016 will begin tomorrow uh, when she's testifying before a lot of those Republicans. Uh, Janine Zakaria, thank you so much for joining us tonight in the War Room.